Howdy, howdy, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Advin, and welcome to another update for the More Pickaxes data pack. In the previous video, we added four new pickaxes to the pack, and in today's video, we're going to be looking at four more pickaxes that have been added to the pack. But real quick, this video is made possible due to the awesome support of my patrons. And as a reward, they have had access to this update for probably the past two months or so. If getting early updates to my data packs is something you are interested in and you are financially capable of supporting me, make sure to hit the i-card in the top right to support me on Patreon. Your donation of one or more dollars a month gives you access to early releases of these data packs as well as sneak peeks of what I'm currently working on and more direct communication with me. There is also some exclusive patron content, such as an update for the More Swords pack that adds 42 in-game recipes. Anyway, thank you for your consideration in that, and let's jump into what these pickaxes actually do. So the four pickaxes added by this update are the Pillow Pickaxe, the Diamond Miner's Pickaxe, the Firework Pickaxe, and the Rainbow Pickaxe. These all need to be crafted in a Custom Crafter. That's a dropper facing upwards with a crafting table thrown on top. The recipes for these pickaxes can be found in-game by pressing L, that will bring up the advancements, go to the more pickaxes tab, and you can scroll through this and find the pickaxes. The firework pickaxe is three fireworks, two sticks, pillow pickaxe, two, three beds, two sticks. And then we have the diamond miner's pickaxe, that's a netherite shovel, netherite ingot, two diamonds, and a, a diamond block. And finally, the rainbow pickaxe is made with three rainbow diamonds and two sticks. And you can find out how to get the rainbow diamonds and XP diamonds on the more swords page. And just to demonstrate how to actually use the custom crafter, just place the items exactly how they were in the actual image. So these need to be white beds, but if you put them in the correct orientation, you'll get a pillow pickaxe. And this seems like a good enough place to jump into it. So let's look at what the pillow pickaxe does. Well, when you hold it, you get mining fatigue, and it is an iron pickaxe as a base. So that means it will take a fair amount of time to break an actual block with it. But in return for um, pretty long break times, so this is slower than a wooden pickaxe, by the way. Um, in return, you get silk touch just for making it. So this pickaxe is essentially meant as an early game pickaxe that is a way to essentially craft a silk touch pickaxe. It is not very good in any way, but it does have silk touch. And that means if you were to find diamonds in your mining expedition, you could pick them up. Oh boy, look at that. There's a diamond ore right here. How did I miss it? Anyway, you can break this and pick it up. And now you have the diamond ore. So it's not exactly a good pickaxe that you would use for like any time mid to late game, but early game it could absolutely be useful. And that's why the recipe only costs three beds and two sticks. All right, I think we've said enough to put this one to bed, so let us move on to the next pickaxe. The next pickaxe on my list is the Diamond Miner's Pickaxe, and this is an upgraded version of the Iron uh, Miner's Pickaxe. Because it is upgraded, it is a Diamond Pickaxe instead of being a stone pickaxe, and that means it can mine faster. Also, it um, will mine out a five block long tunnel instead of a three block tunnel. So this is pretty much the perfect pickaxe for um, a, someone that's wanting to strip mine, but it doesn't work on ores like our other pickaxes, but it can just make a long tunnel for you, which can be very useful. It's also decent for clearing out spaces just due to the sheer amount of blocks that it breaks. As you can see, it just, is decent at clearing out stuff because it's just breaking tons of blocks. This could also be enchanted with efficiency 5 to become a whole lot faster. And so here's a demonstration of that. You can see we're just tearing through the world. But this is not quite as fast as we can get. Suppose we were to have haste 2, um, like from a beacon or whatever, we can actually instant mine like this. And this allows you to just seriously, seriously just tear through everything in, in your way. Um, besides ores, it will just tear through all of the blocks. And so you can clear out some pretty large areas with this one. It's a little bit less controllable than the Tunneler's Dream from the previous video, but um, it can also clear out a decent amount of space. So overall, this is definitely a useful and powerful pickaxe to have in your repertoire. Next up is the Firework Pickaxe. This has got to be the most useless pickaxe that I have ever considered adding. Um, it wasn't my idea, it was from Subs World, and um, I had the texture that I made for him a while back, so I figured I would add it to the pack. 
Anyway, whenever you break a block, it causes a random firework explosion at the location. Um, they generally, all that this does is it hurts you a little bit. So I really don't know any logical reason of actually having the firework pickaxe. But I guess it looks cool or something. I don't know. The firework pickaxe really isn't that useful. But moving on to a pickaxe that actually has a functionality, let's look at the rainbow pickaxe. The rainbow pickaxe gives us a brand new way of making a die farm. Whenever you break a block with this pickaxe, you'll see there's a little uh, rainbow of color, and a random die will drop alongside the block that you broke. What this means is essentially you can farm dies while mining through the world. And besides dropping dies, it is just a regular diamond pickaxe, so everything else about it is exactly the same. Because it drops a die every single time you break a block, this means that you can actually create a unique die farm out of a cobblestone generator. So you can just sit here breaking blocks, and you'll see that the hopper picks up the dies and they go into the chest. Um, you could probably come up with a better design than I just did here, but this is just a simple showcase to see that I can, in fact, make a die farm. Of course, there are numerous other ways to make a die farm in Minecraft, such as with flowers and bone meal, but also the swords data pack adds a rainbow sword that makes mobs drop dies. So this is just another option. And because this one doesn't require that you fight mobs, it can save you from dying. <laughs> Sorry, that was bad. That was, ba that was bad. Anyway, that is all I have for today's video. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like on it. And if you want to make sure not to miss out on future content coming to the channel, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys all in the next Data Pack Showcase. Thanks for watching.